Life Audio. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We want families to come here and gain insightful strategies that empower them to successfully teach diverse learners at home. Hosted by founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool, Peggy Ployer. Our goal is that these powerful weekly conversations will boost your confidence to cultivate the best at-home learning environment for your student. For more homeschool resources, go to spedhomeschool.com. You're listening to Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. We'll start the conversation with Peggy and her guests next. It's a crazy world out there, moms and dads. I'm Katherine Seegers, host of Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics to help you be a godly parent in an ungodly world. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Here's Peggy Ployer. Today we are going to talk about how to create harmonious spiritual and homeschool rhythms with special guest Katie Westenberg. Katie is a follower of Christ, a wife, and a mom. Um, Growing faithfully alongside her four homeschooled children, she believes boldly in the transformation power of faith in Jesus Christ. As an author and a speaker, she teaches women how to grow a robust theology of who God is, become students of scripture, and learn to live that truth um, with With courage, she serves a thriving community of women at katiewestenberg.com and makes her home in the lovely Pacific Northwest. Welcome, Katie. I am so happy to have you on the show and for you to share with us today. Thank you for having me, Peggy. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So harmonious spiritual and homeschool rhythms. That just sounds wonderful. I think it it almost seems like a pipe dream for many, um, especially in our community. They're like... I live in so much chaos <laughs> that this is just not a possibility, but um, I want you to hang on if, if that's where you're at right now, because this is a message that you really just need to hear. Um, we, we don't realize we are a product so much of things around us and, and things we, we don't even know about. And Katie has some insight and some wisdom to share with you today on that. So, um, so stay tuned. If you are watching live, um, we would love for you to be part of our conversation. Um, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, just put your comments or questions in the feed and we will see those on our side and we would love to include them as part of our conversation. So, um, so getting started, Katie, I always ask my guests, the first question is just Tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and especially since you are a homeschooler, a little bit about your homeschooling journey. Yeah, yeah. So I've been married for 22 years to my high school sweetheart. And so I had big plans after high school to leave. We live over here in South Central Washington. And I thought I would leave for another coastline. Um, But I ended up leaving for college and coming right back and staying here. So God obviously had different plans. Mm -hmm. But um, and we've had four children and I didn't really intend to homeschool. I was I went to public or private school. And so I wasn't, um, that wasn't really anything I had known or experienced, but as we started to have children, um, we had seen some families do it really well. And that's what yeah. caught our attention is just seeing how they had done it and how their kids turned out. And mm-hmm. we thought, is this possible for us? So I really only committed to one kid at a time or one year yeah. at a time, you know, <laughs> so I have all my children. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, right. well, we could do this for one year. How much can I mess up? Right. Right. And by the grace of God, my oldest just graduated in June. So Um, He's 18. And then I have daughters that are 15 and 13. And then my last is a boy who's 11. So we're we're still going. And now I just wouldn't trade it for anything being on this other side of it now and seeing it through um, to completions. And and God's just grace through all of that is faithfulness and my strengths and apparent weaknesses as well. But he just he grows the fruit. So it's been it's been a sweet time for my family. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a good point as God grows the fruit. We often think that we're the ones growing fruit <laughs> and yes. adds yeah. a lot of stress to our lives when we, we think right. that we, that's our job. Um, mm-hmm. But, but that's awesome. And yes, when you graduate the first, it's like, you go, Oh, this is possible. <laughs> and it kind of, you, you kind of let down, you know, that, that tension a little bit. I've graduated three now. Um, that was all my kids. So I'm done. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, but it does, it seems like this insurmountable hill. And once you've made it over the one with the first one, you're like, oh man, why did I make such a deal about this? That's right. And, That's right. Yeah. I, w- I was kind of surprised by the amount of shock I had. Like it happened. It worked. Like I, I right. believe God was baseball. I was like, well, I don't know why I'm surprised right now, but I'm a little bit surprised. Like it right. all worked. And that's how you become mm-hmm. a different parent to those younger kids because you just learn as you go and you learn to trust God more as you go too. Absolutely. Yes. And you apologize mm-hmm. a lot, apologize a lot and ask forgiveness from your oldest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, God makes them very resilient. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so, and mine is very strong willed too. So that uh, helps as well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's but, better to start that way, right? They, they oh, sharpen yeah. you. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's so true. Um, so when did you realize that you needed to homeschool and live from a, a new f- framework? Cause, um, I'm, I'm going to let our audience know that, that Katie wrote a book. Um, I've got a copy right here. Um, it's called, But Then She Remembered. And in here you talk, um, I guess m- the most pertinent chapter that that I found was God's view of our time. Is- of time. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. ours. Um, mm-hmm. When did you realize that that was kind of out of sync in your life? And um, just kind of share the uh, a story um, with other homeschool moms, because I think they're going to really relate to, to where you're coming from on this. Yeah, it, it might have been day one homeschooling, but I, I realized it's out of sync when you have all these ideals, you know, I, I'd read right. great books and knew what this looked like in my mind. It's like parenting yeah. before you have children, right? Oh, you're yeah. so idealistic mm-hmm. and, and you can't do it any other way. So there's nothing wrong with having these goals and ambitions of this is what it's going to look like. And we're going to sit in cute clothes and listen to classical music and do art. And it's just, you know, (laughs) and then day one, when my entire kitchen table is just destroyed and it's a mess and I still have to make dinner, like, wait a minute, this is not like, you know, or week one, this is not what it's, I thought it was going to look like. And, Mm -hmm. or you're frustrated or tired and yeah, we get to do this again tomorrow. And, and that's maybe why we committed to one year at a time early on. I thought 18 years, it feels like a sentence. Like, I don't know how I could, um, I could yeah. possibly do that. So, so there's some of that just realizing it right away. But I think really what brought that all to fruition is, is just the daily faithfulness of, you know, okay, so now I have to teach this kid and then another kid comes along and they're finally learning too. And, and, right. and it just seems like there's not enough time. There's not enough of you. All of those absolutely lies come in our head. There's not enough time, like just in my day, but there's not also enough time in 18 years for me to teach these kids everything thing they need to know to thrive. It's just, it all feels like lack. Right. And so Mm -hmm. that's the lie we begin to believe when I think, wait a minute, if I believe God created me to do this, if I believe he empowers me to do this, then there, there, the enough isn't me. The enough isn't the time. The enough is God. So it's changing my view and how I look at the time I do have. Am I going to do everything? Am I going to teach everything? No, but I, I probably didn't learn everything in those 18 years either. There's good growth, thank God, that happens after those 18 years. But the Absolutely. time I do have, as limited as it is, the capacity I do have, as limited as that is, I want that to glorify God. So it kind of changes how we look at that. Right. Yeah. So in general, I mean, how do you see that most parents come into that and kind of react to that struggle, I guess, Mm -hmm. you know, because um, I guess our first inclination as our, our human nature is not to say, oh yeah, I just need to lean on God. (laughs) <laughs> it's what we should do, but it's not mm-hmm. what we do. Um, mm-hmm. So how can our viewers recognize maybe I'm in this place and I'm I'm maybe not handling it the right way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, and, and our first reflex is shame, right? I'm not enough for yeah. that. You know, God should have picked a different girl if they only had <laughs> that mom, you know, and we're seeing from the outside, if they had that mom who did all those creative projects and she's so patient and all those other right. things, you know, we just look elsewhere, mm-hmm. but, but getting away from it for a moment and thinking, what would God have me do? Like, what is my ultimate goal here with these kids? Right. Is it this many math lessons by this date? Or is it to take a heart 
that is like, you know, flailing as theirs uh-huh. is, as mine often is as well. And to bow before my creator and surrender it to him. Like, so if a good day to day is half a math lesson and, and we glorified God in it, then is that going right. to be good enough? Would that be good enough? If I had to stand before the Lord and say, this is what we did, but we did right. it faithfully. And it, you know, I don't know if it matched up with anyone's standards or scope and sequence today, <laughs> right. but you know what? We did the best we could with what we had, right? That That's like yeah. the talents that we spend before him. And mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Something ugly. Like I'm trying to chase this, but we have to get here. Do we, do we really have to get here? You know, and, and some days right. are great. Some seasons are easier where we're super productive and mm-hmm. I don't think we stay there long enough because we get super prideful if we did, right? Like that all of a sudden. Oh, so true. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so then someone gets sick or family comes and visits or someone's not doing well or with some of your students are going to go through struggles that we're right. in a season right now where we're just not productive by the world standards. But if mm-hmm. produ- productivity is loving them well through this yes. and glorifying God and keeping a happy heart, no matter my circumstances, I mean, that's really what we want to teach our kids because they're as adults, they're going to go through the same thing. These ups and oh, downs. Absolutely. Of, yes. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're not only learning from us in that season, but they're watching how we deal with the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And those lessons stay much more ingrained in them than the math lesson that only got half finished or the, right. absolutely. Because mm-hmm. without even thinking about it, they're, they're putting that, mode of operation into Mm -hmm. their own life. It it just happens. And we don't even know, Mm -hmm. you know, that it happens. They, Mm -hmm. you know, so much research says that, you know, if you had a parent who was depressed, you're going to grow up with depressive attitude because of the copying Mm -hmm. you do of Mm -hmm. that parent's just what they do. Not that Mm -hmm. you were an environment that, you know, was was high into, you know, what, which would, would lead to depression. It was just the response that you were taught without words, mm-hmm. you know, that nonverbal mm-hmm. response. So yeah, it's, right. it's just insane right. that, yeah, we can get so off without even knowing about it. After a word from our sponsor, we'll dive back into this conversation. Hi, I'm Beckett Cook, host of The Beckett Cook Show. I lived as a gay man in Hollywood for many, many years until I had a radical encounter with Jesus 13 years ago. Since then, I've gotten my master's degree in seminary and published a book called A Change of Affection. On my podcast, The Becca Cook Show, I sit down with fascinating Christian scholars and thinkers to address the lies of the culture and bring the biblical truth to bear on those lies. To start listening now, go to lifeaudio.com or search for The Becca Cook Show on your favorite podcasting platform. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool. Go to spedhomeschool.com to get resources and support for teaching your unique learner at home. And yet we live in a world that is, um, I think, puts us even more so out of sync. And um, can you talk about that and just the the general move to to being much more distracted and how Mm -hmm. that leads us even more out of sync from being able to to pull back and focus on what's most important. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Your words remind me of a specific conversation my husband and I had. And it was just after those like one long days where just everything blends together and, and you're not on all those highs and peaks. And, you know, this kid isn't excelling at all these things and they all have their issues and I'm feeling the weight of all of them. And I, I the question we asked that night, I remember was, is it possible to succeed at all of the things that don't matter and fail at the ones that do, right? Like, could I focus uh, so much on all yes. these areas where the kids aren't adding up, but do we mm-hmm. have their hearts? So it's just right. that stepping back and remembering what is my ultimate goal with these kids? What's my ultimate goal? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, so I can show someone on their paper that their GPA was wonderful? Is it that I can, you know, brag about that to other parents or their grandparents or whatever, so I can feel good about what I'm doing here? Right. Or is yeah. it like, I really want to bring, bring them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord? So what would mm-hmm. that look like on a given day? So asking yeah. those greater questions. It's not not taking on the shame and drowning with them, but like, okay, how can I step back and reorient what we're doing here? Absolutely. Yes. And that seems like such a hard thing to do. Do you have any suggestions on on how do how do we get ourselves out of that mindset and mm-hmm. say, um, I'm I'm on the wrong path right now? <laughs> or even to notice yeah. I'm on the wrong path yeah. right now. Yeah. 
I, I would just keep the question in front of me because we can get better at asking those questions. I remember like I've done this in so many different ways in my life. I feel like when we get in a new area, we can be really good at it in one area of our life, like in our yeah. marriage or whatever. But then we turn to another area and we just forget all of our tools, right? Yeah. So for me, that looked like with my very first book that came out. So the majority of my time is spent as a homeschooling mom. That's what I do. And God has carved out some capacity to do this writing and speaking thing. So the first book comes along. And just before it was about to come out, about six weeks before, your publicist starts lining up all these interviews and things that you need to be doing. And I'd never done any of that before. You know, my job right. is at home with my kids. Yeah. And so all of these things were put on my calendar calendar and it started to make me really anxious, really nervous because there's all this stuff out there that I can't address now and I'm not used to having it on my schedule and I'm thinking, is it too right. much? Is it, you know, am I still going to be able to have dinner on the table? Am I, is this a bad decision? Am I going to ruin my kids? You know, the question we all ask ourselves from time to time. And I remember calling one of my friends and asking her, is this just what it's going to be like for the next six weeks? I'm going to have this like ball of nerves in my stomach all the time. I don't like feeling this way. And she said, I want to ask you one thing right now, Katie what are you believing to be true about God right now? So what she just did is took me from like that zero in focusing on all the lack, right? Same thing right. as a homeschooling mom drowning and not being enough and saying mm -hmm. like, pull back and remember who he is here. Cause you know, I write about these things. I believe these things, but in that exactly. moment I got my eye off the ball. Right. Yeah. And I, I wept. Cause I was just like, I'm believing that he's not big enough. I'm believing that my practical theology, what I'm living right now is an absolute lie. And so quickly I yeah. was, you know, I changed my heart to believing that. So, you know, quick to have a friend that can help you to be yeah, the friend, absolutely. you know, mm -hmm. bring your eyes back here. Remember math doesn't matter that much, you know, not that much. And it's not worth losing relationship over. So right. um, d just having a friend to do that, but also being that friend. And I think yeah. because uh -huh. I have friends that have done that, I become better at asking myself the question. So if you need to put it on your refrigerator, you know, what's my ultimate purpose today? What's my ultimate goal when we do math, get it in front of you enough to train your reflexes to think about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I, and I think we, we've so separated from community too, and that mm -hmm. we often don't have those voices of truth coming into our lives. And so we just dig our hole deeper and deeper and push That's the world right. out more and more. And mm -hmm. the burden becomes greater because we are not looking mm -hmm. where we need to be looking. And there's nobody telling us that we're looking in the wrong place. That's right. Um, That's exactly and, right. and you just have to, you have to really work. And I, I realize that parents in our community, like when my, my son was kicked out of every homeschool co-op and everything, it, it was work to try to find community but it was work that was well worth it. And right. yeah. um, because like Katie was talking about, you can't from a sometimes even a perspective that wants to pursue God, <laughs> pursue mm -hmm. God, because you're, mm -hmm. you're thinking your everything is just so muddled, especially mm -hmm. when you feel that pressure. I, I think that, you know, like you were saying that the pressure kind of pressed you um, of all these things that were coming into your life and, and we we tend to just you know go to these routes or places where it's like I'm, I'm putting on this protective mechanism to like almost shut down in this place. Mm -hmm. But but I, I love what you said. You know, God is bigger than all of that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and if He puts you in it, He's going to bring you through it. And yeah, that's that's something we often often forget. Mm -hmm. um, so. As far as I'm, you know, I, I've talked to one parent and I wanted to bring this question up. Um, they said, you know what, I, I want to rest. I, I want to have this, this peaceful time. I want to sit down. I want to read my Bible. But when I do, I can't. I just, I sit there and like my mind is running. I, I can't mm -hmm. even rest. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of advice do you have for that mom? Yeah. Yeah. My first is that you're normal, right? Because yeah, exactly. I, I experienced this. <laughs> I experienced the same thing. You know, it, it is so tempting. And I feel like distractions aren't necessarily new, but they really are closer than ever before. You know, we have our yeah. phones, they're usually just an arm's length away. And if it's not our phone, it's on our wrist through our watch. That's just closer right. than ever before. Right. Mm -hmm. So the temptation Absolutely. is greater. Um, so there's a couple of things. First of all, I love when I read through scripture and I was thinking through these things, I love the idea that God knows our frame. 
that he mm. knows we are made from dust. He knows how these minds work, right? right. When, I, when we talk about remembering in the book, the whole thing is, is that God has placed that all throughout scripture to remember, Absolutely. remember who he is. And, and he knows, and he knows our weak minds. So he set up standards for remembrance. He set up the plan for yep. Joshua and a set of rocks. He's saying, set these things mm -hmm. up so you can remember and you can tell these things to your children and to your grandchildren. And we see Absolutely. those miracles. We, we see like the Red Sea parting mentioned through scripture again mm -hmm. and again and again. And we see, um, we see even like Paul's conversion told three times throughout Acts, just the repetitive nature of the Bible reminds me that you know, he knew that we were going to forget these things easily. And so we do yeah. this again and again and again, mm -hmm. right? So it helps yeah. me to know, you know my frame. So I'm not some huge disappointment to you when I sit here and my mind drifts <laughs> and my mind drifts, right? This is not shocking uh, to God, right? right? So there, there's mm -hmm. a load of grace there. But at the same time, there's a certain amount of my will that needs to come into play too. Yeah. So I don't make a big deal about it. I don't think I'm a failure. I might as well just stop. Like, no, I think, okay, Lord, can you help me? You know, right. I love in John 14, it says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of all the things I taught to you. Oh, so man. it helps me know, okay, the Holy Spirit <laughs> is a remember, right? He's someone right. who's going to help me remember. So I can mm -hmm. ask him, can you help me? I am so distracted right now. I'm just going to acknowledge it for what it is. My mind is going a million places because there's laundry that needs to be done. There's dishes that need to be done. Those kids are going to wake up any minute, right? There's like all this tension. Right. This is real. I'm not mm -hmm. making it up, but could you help me right now? I just want to focus on you. And Absolutely. sometimes it's just, just like, um, like lowering our expectations. So maybe mm -hmm. I don't need to read three chapters or three three books this morning. Maybe it's one verse. Maybe it's one verse I need. Right? And this is this is what I have time for and capacity for, but I'm going to speak that verse back to the Lord. And maybe that's what I'm going to think about throughout the day. So that kind of yeah. helps too. I can, I can, I might have capacity for this right now. I'm going right. to ask him to help me focus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that kind of leads into, you know, what, what are some practical things as a homeschool parent that we can do? Cause I mean, our, our title is that harmonious spiritual rhythms and homeschooling and, and it just seems so out of sync so much. And we, we can lay the best laid plans, you know, and all these things. Mm -hmm. And yet very few days really feel like they were good days. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I just want to put that out there. Cause I think a lot of times all we see is pictures of people's good days, like yeah. on Instagram and all of that. And the majority of it is not, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you're a sinner, your kids are sinners, they, <laughs> your house yeah. is chaos. And, yeah. um, and yet in the middle of it, we are called to, to raise up the next generation and, mm -hmm. and do it in a way that's honoring God too. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring that kind of all together in a way that, you know, we can practically have some tools to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing I would do is I would sit down and write out how you define a good day. What's a good day, right? Yeah. Because I, I see that same thing on Instagram. You see someone reading their Bible in the morning with the candle lit and the tea's all steamy and their house is all clean. And, and that's yeah. kind of the standard of what I need, right? In order to... Right to meet mm -hmm. with the Lord. And, and what if it's not that sometimes, what if, you know, my, so what if everything's a mess and I'm getting half a sentence in and, and you know, yeah. what, what does that look like? So what, what is a good day? What is a good day? Is it, is it taking what's placed in front of me, you know, however big or little that might be and just offering that back to him. So right. we can put like some hard stops into our day. So I, I found during the bulk of homeschooling when it was really intense, you know, I have teenagers now who are more independent, so it's not quite as intense as it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> but man, meeting with the Lord in the morning, that was always the goal. But if kids right. wake up early or kids are sick and I, I've been up half the night, so then sometimes exactly. you sleep in. So that's not like, God knows what you need. He knows. And maybe mm -hmm. rest was it right now. Maybe rest was worship in some unique way. Right. I love that. And then yes. I tried to put in after lunch, like when I would just sit down and read, I love to read the Psalms. I said, so those mm -hmm. psalmists are like so good at getting at the heart of matters. So that would be my afternoon hard stop when I could. I would just sit down and read one psalm before I'd read anything else because I would try to have everyone have a quiet reading time. You know, when that when that could happen, there was a season where that was easier than others. But that's yes. what I would do. I just read a psalm to reset my heart. Okay, but those mm. aren't like what I need. I, I remember one one day when my kids were really young and I had lots of kids not sleeping through the night and and I, I can be a real list checker, right? I can like these are the oh, things yeah. I need to get done. So Bible mm -hmm. times another thing I check and. I remember yeah. going on through the day and I had a baby that didn't sleep through the night and you get up and you just get going. It's just before you even, it's 80 miles an hour before you even get a chance to drink your coffee. Right. right. And I remember <laughs> getting through that day and asking the Lord early on, you're going to have to help me because here we go. Right. And then you right. just go. 
And I remember getting to the end of the day and, and being so grateful for his nearness. And like, mm. I, I, you walked with me the whole day, like I did it without getting anxious and overwhelmed. And then I thought about, I never read my Bible that day. I never checked my mark. And I think huh. that was so important for me to read, like he's with me, even when right. I don't check the mark, right? So that mm -hmm. it's not about that. And, and that's what he was showing me in that moment. It's not about you, you know, checking something off a list, Katie, know that I am with you. So is that the goal to be in the word? Absolutely. But it's not yes. what makes a day good or bad. Exactly. Yeah. And God had to reorient that with me too, with church activities. You know, it's not like what you look good like to everybody else in your community. Um, it's, are you being obedient to me in this space? And in that, um, I mean, that's, that's life changing because we, we put so much demands on ourselves that we don't, we should not. And that list <laughs> tends to be like this, this blaring announcement to us that you're not doing it right. And you should really um, refocus and, and really get these things done because that's, what's important instead of, you know, God's presence is with you and are you paying attention to him and what he wants you to do? right in the moment. So yeah, that's, those are some great things. I, I love that hard stop. Um, and, and yet the grace to give yourself and the grace that God gives you in that, mm -hmm. that it's, it's not an end all be all that, you know, this, this has to happen then so, just doesn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so you, you talked a little bit about distracted, you know, we, mm -hmm. We live in a very distracted world. What is the cost of being distracted? Mm -hmm. It's a great question to be asking, right? Like what, what do we lose right. in not focusing on one thing? And, and the, the feeling of being distracted seems to be pretty rampant. Like everyone yeah. knows it, oh, everyone absolutely. feels it, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What, it, what is the cost of that? So oftentimes we think of social media we think of these mm -hmm. algorithms, the Netflix algorithms, all these things that, that are set up to take our eyeballs away from what we want. They just want to keep our eyeballs yeah. on a certain screen, right? They, they are yeah. after our attention. They call it the attention economy, right? It's set up mm -hmm. to um, oh, grab yeah. our attention. But beyond that, the real cost of distraction is not distracted eyes or just the 15 minutes we spent here, but it's a distracted heart. It's how those things affect our heart yeah. and our thinking. Like we were just talking about with what you see with someone's quiet time online, right? Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I don't just think that doesn't remind me, oh, I should, I should make time to meet with the Lord too. But then all of this things in about, am I doing it like she is? And do I have enough? And then does that take my heart away from yeah. what I really need to be focusing on anyways, is that healthy? Mm -hmm. So when, right. when the psalmist says, give me an undivided heart that I might fear your name, when I have these factions of my heart going out in so many mm -hmm. directions, is there anything left to give right. before the Lord, right? Yeah. So that just going beyond the surface of what is it like when I'm living with my heart in all these places? I had a friend share mm -hmm. some research search with me recently, and she was saying that just in 30 minutes on social media, we it can expend so much of our emotional empathy, we don't have it left to give to the people around us. Which I thought that's wow. so interesting because yeah. we can be so aware now of what's going on across the world. And it's a beautiful thing at the same time. It's a blessing that we can help people around the world and we can be aware right. of needs that we weren't before. But mm -hmm. sometimes we take so much of that in that we don't mm -hmm. have any compassion left for the people right in front of us in our home. So being right. aware of what is the cost of this, of all this information I'm taking in, is it a healthy thing in this time for me or is it an unhealthy mm -hmm. thing and weighing that is really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's really prioritizing. And, mm -hmm. um, and I never even, yeah, considered yet. Yeah, we only have so much in our bucket <laughs> and the bucket's empty. It's right. empty. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, what is most important? Who is most important? And, you know, it mm -hmm. just, it kills me to see, you know, parents on their phones when their kids are right next to them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I try the best not to do that. And a lot of people get really upset with me. I don't answer texts for days. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. my phone is usually not on me. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, but yes but it has to be a conscious effort almost now because you're drawn in so much to so many things and, you know, little dings here and bells there. And, um, and to say no is so hard, but, mm -hmm. but it is so important because we, yeah, we can lose out on so much um, just right. that, and you, you, you lose it. You can't get it back. 
you know, now that two of my three kids have moved out now, um, Mm -hmm. you know, you realize that time is way shorter Mm -hmm. than you thought it was going to be. And, Mm -hmm. and so now your influence is way down (laughs) in the Mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. Thankfully it's still there being a homeschool parent, you've developed those relationships and my kids want me in their lives, but Mm -hmm. not in the same capacity as living in the same house anymore. But, Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, that's, it's a big, big wake up that um, mm-hmm. we can, we can miss so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that perspective so, after you have a kid leave is, is so important. And you, you just can't buy that, right? Like just so now I have a kid launching as well. And I think it really just changes and, and no one could have told me that before. So that's right. just something you live through, but you realize how quick it goes and it changes how you be like, yeah, this is tiring. Yep. This mm-hmm. is exhausting, but man, I just get a little time to do it. And I want, I want all of it. it. And so yeah. just, Lord strengthen me to do it well. Uh huh. Yes, because on the ones yeah. that follow after that, it's like, oh man, I got to give you more. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so they get a lot more attention. But yes, mm-hmm. and so yeah. Unfortunately, my oldest doesn't even like to travel, so we only see him twice a year. But that's oh, just wow. the way he is. But yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> you take it for what you can. Um. So. Interruptions versus distraction. So I we have a lot of interruptions in our days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Things come up, you know, not as planned. Um, how do we mentally prepare ourselves to say, yes, I this is something that needs my attention, and this is something that's not. Um, yeah. And then just to prioritize it, I had a discussion with my daughter before the the broadcast today, and she's like, oh yeah, in our first class success. I, Psychology for Success in college, they were talking about how we need to um, to make sure that we don't um, focus on the urgent and yet the important. And mm-hmm. I think that's just a struggle. But mm-hmm. but yet that interruption versus distraction and how do we qualify each of those and mm-hmm. then live with some things we are just going to, our plans are just going to be off, we're going to be interrupted, mm-hmm. but... Mm-hmm our plans are going to be off if we're distracted too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Yeah. So in my own life, I notice that distractions are often things that I choose to lend my eyes to. Right. So I could pick up my phone I'm going to look up a recipe, right? Just with mm-hmm. great intentions because the phone is a tool, right? And I can use right. it in great ways. So I'm getting a dinner recipe, but then all of a sudden a notification pops up. And so then, then I'm here and then I'm there and then I'm on social checking on a friend. And then I'm looking at someone from high school's paint color on their house, which I don't even care right. about their paint right. color. And here I am just like <laughs> 10 minutes later, right? Like how does this, it's so bizarre how it happens and we're on right. some rabbit trail. So, you know, I could waste 10 minutes of my time doing that quite mm-hmm. easily. But then when someone interrupts me, it's them coming into what I'm doing. And then I'm annoyed, right? Because I have something I'm right. doing right now and I need, it's uh-huh. very important and I need you to not interrupt mom, right? Mm-hmm. But, but I just wasted 10 minutes over there when it was my <laughs> choice to give way to distraction. So that's when I noticed the disparity, right. like this seems like a little bit off here. I'm kind of missing yeah. something here. And then when I turn to look at the life of Christ, like the interruptions are hard because as a homeschooling mom, you got to be on it to get anything done. I have to be somewhat orderly. And if you, if people keep on interrupting me, I want to love them well, but then you have grandparents who want to stop by and someone else who stops by and someone else who needs help. Like I could literally get nothing done if I, if I give way to all these interruptions. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the life of Christ and I was thinking, did did he ever get interrupted? Did you know, what was going on here? He was interrupted constantly, constantly interrupted all the time. Someone coming on scene or he goes across the lake and someone's running to the other shore. I just think that is so exhausting. And he continually over and over again, met those people with compassion, right? He's Mm -hmm. he's going one way and here they are. He's going to help Jairus's daughter and the woman with the issue of blood meets him on the way. He met those Mm -hmm. people with compassion. And he saw this as this is the eternal work. This is the work that the Lord put in right in front of me. And in the same way, he was never distracted. So he was often interrupted, never distracted, because when he was done, he went about his mission. And this is what I'm going to do. And he went back on his way. So I just try Mm -hmm. to adopt as much as I can. Okay, this is what it is. You know, 
Right. Yesterday, my parents, they were having an issue with their plumbing at their house and they needed to come over. Well, we're going to be homeschooling, but I guess we're not today. This is what we're going right. to do. You know, this is mm-hmm. who God gave me to love. And it's taken some years. When my kids were younger, I just thought if I have to control the structure to control the outcome, right? Yeah. And at the same time, you know, yeah. I, you, you love it in theory that people would stop by your home and then practicality, they can feel the tension when you're like looking at your clock and, oh my goodness, I need you to get out of here so we can get something right. done. <laughs> exactly. But what if this is the word? that God gave me to do today, right? What if this is the work God gave me to do? So there's Mm -hmm. balance in that because I can't have people coming over every day that we really never get any school work done. But it's not like that. That's usually not what's causing my frustration. It's these things that throw when I had a different plan. So Mm -hmm. it's really come to Lord, help me see at the beginning of the day, if I could just ask him, help me see the work you have for me today. I have this plan. It's okay to have a plan, but it's also okay to toss it out and say, this is what God gave me to do today. And this Mm -hmm. is what we're going to do. And I want to not only serve those people well, but I'm teaching my kids how to do it while I do it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's those, the interruptions. I, I love what you said about that though. It's my choice. You know, mm-hmm. there's, there's so many things that we do choose and we get so set. And I remember being in that too. I had major anger issues when my kids were young and I wrote about that in, in a book, but just, that was one of the things that God showed me too, was that this is, this is a teaching moment. It's not, uh, you have to fix it right away and, you know, be frustrated with it. And when you can make that shift about what, what is really happening in this moment, then, Mm -hmm. you know, and and step back enough that you can evaluate it like sensibly (laughs) Mm -hmm. because a lot of times we don't evaluate things sensibly and that's when it ends up being a problem. But Mm -hmm. um, to, to build in just that ability to say, where is this coming from? And, and why am I responding this way? And, Mm -hmm. you know, what is the root of that? And, and God is so good. And like you said, you know, Jesus is the perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. And I remember being a young mom and reading about, you know, all the distractions. I I have notes in my Bible on the side (laughs) of Mm -hmm. that, just just saying, oh, if I could only have such compassion when I'm interrupted. Mm -hmm. That's right. (laughs) That's right. But but God fills in our weaknesses. Thank you. He does. He does. Yeah. And when we just ask him for that, ask him like, I I think sometimes homeschoolers live lives that are even more interrupted than most because people know that you're home, right? Like they, oh, you're home. You're fine. You can help with this or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a great privilege and opportunity. Um, but it's something that we need to keep asking him for asking him, show me throughout the day, like train my reflexes. Cause what you're saying there is when you are able to pull back and assess the situation, which is often what it is the answer to most of our responses, right? Even when we're, we're deciding if this is a good day or a bad day, like, Lord, help me pull back and look at this. Like you do help me look right. at these people like you do. Right. So we're not mm-hmm. really capable of that on our own. Our flesh is loud and our reflexes of our flesh are quick, right? I have something to say yeah. about that. And I could just say yeah. it really quick to help me like, guide my <laughs> heart and my tongue in that. Right. Yeah. 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 That's really, really good. Um, it, it is, it's a training and mm-hmm. I, I think we can not give ourselves enough grace realizing that we're in as much training as our kids. And I love that about your, mm-hmm. your bio. What I read at the very beginning mm-hmm. is you're growing with your kids. Um, mm-hmm. we don't often see this as a training ground for us. And, mm-hmm. and yet, um, a lot of people don't start homeschooling and I know this, this is a season, Christmas season, people often evaluate is school working, you know, is this something I want to do? And, um, mm-hmm. and they look at seasoned homeschoolers and say, I can't be that person, mm-hmm. but they don't realize that we've been trained. We have mm-hmm. grown with our kids. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would you have for a parent who's maybe sitting on the fence and saying, you know, I just, I, I feel this nudge from God, but I just really don't think that this is something he can do through me. Mm -hmm. It's a hard place to be because I I remember, I so remember being a young homeschooler and seeing those more seasoned homeschoolers too. And just the, the grace they had. And, and sometimes I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a gradual process of going there, right? Like no one, no one got there overnight. It wasn't just, I mean, by the power of the Holy spirit, you could, 
But but there's years of training, years of growing with God, years of gaining that wisdom. So it's not an either Mm -hmm. or like I'm either going to be like this or I'm going to be like them, one or the other. Like there's a million degrees in between. And those little tiny bits of growth that one time you were patient with the interruption, all of that helps, right? All of it counts, our little tiny baby steps of growth. And I think if we look at how that would happen in our children, right? So Mm -hmm. you're teaching your kids math. They're going to yeah. learn that so incrementally. And we don't expect them to do math like a senior when they're in second grade, right? Right. And so we don't every day between second grade and, and 12th grade say, you're smarter now. You're smart. But they are. Like all those lessons yeah. are adding up and they're growing. And we don't have as much grace with ourselves. We want to be yeah. a senior when we're in second grade. So like the, those small so bits true. of growth, they all count. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other day I was reading an article by the Harvard Business Review and they had done some studies on wisdom. And they, they, and this is like totally secular, but you know, yeah. common grace issues. They were talking about the way we accrue wisdom. They actually believe it's living through circumstances. And then when we're able to remember those circumstances, we can discern how people respond. And so really accrued wisdom is yeah. just remembering circumstances and remembering responses. And I thought, hmm. why wouldn't it be that way? Right. We, right. we kind of grow, but we can't do that overnight. We can't live enough right. experiences. We can't have all of that at once. We can pray mm-hmm. that God grows us and he can give wisdom to those who ask, but we need to be patient with ourselves along the way. Yeah. I think we live in such a society that's like, if you get, if you go to school, if you study this, if you, you know, buy this master class, you're just going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't happen. That wisdom is not ingrained in us until we live mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And um, you can spend thousands of dollars <laughs> on gaining wisdom, which you only gain knowledge and yes. you really don't know how to use it <laughs> until yes. you use it. <laughs> right. Yes. So, so yes, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a great, a great point of view to have because mm-hmm. yeah, it, um, it answers a lot of, a lot of those questions. Um, yeah. And it only increases our dependence on the Lord, right? Our need for him to teach mm-hmm. us through like, and man, if we could instantly accrue all of that wisdom, we'd be so prideful. Like come learn from me because yes. I got this homeschool thing figured out, you know? Like what, what an opportunity for pride. Instead, we sit in a place of humility saying, Lord, I need you again today. Okay, exactly. now it's a new challenge yeah. in science and I need you again today. Now it's a new kid and a new personality and man, they're in a funk and I don't want that mm-hmm. to bring me into a funk. Can you help me today? So it's just living in yeah, a place of need and knowing place of need is not a place of loss, right? It's a place mm-hmm. of winning because I'm doing this with Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mm-hmm. often... Sometimes people say I'm considered the expert on special education homeschooling. And I said, you know, I, I really have no expertise at all. <laughs> Everybody I interview, I learn more from. And I realize how much I did it badly. <laughs> and and their wisdom is just being added to this collective. And I'm learning from so many people because I've been doing this podcast mm-hmm. now for almost five years. Um, I've mm-hmm. sat at the feet of so many people with wisdom. And so, yes, I probably have more crude knowledge just by being able to go, Oh, I should have done it that way. And, you know, asking questions and just learning um, mm-hmm. from others and then mm-hmm. practicing it after I, I've kind of taken away the bits and pieces from those conversations. And, and mm-hmm. I, I think we, we forget that um, we have to, we have to go through that and, and mm-hmm. that God mm-hmm. works in and through all of those circumstances and community is so important. Um and in helping that. And we had talked about that um, already a bit. Um, how do you find it within your own family that, um, that you help each other to remember what's most important now that your kids are getting older? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to a certain degree, everyone has to learn that on their own, right? It's this, yeah. they're all growing in their own relationship with the Lord as I continually am, right? Mm -hmm. But we can set rhythms and practices. So the other day I was talking with a a gal on an interview. We were talking about things we do to remember, like what are some hard things you can put, like like real practices, tangible practices you can put in place in your life when you're feeling fear, you're feeling like those lies that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And she was saying how she she worships. She's like, you know, when when everything just starts to fall apart in my home, I can put on worship music and I can bust that through the speakers and it just Mm -hmm. changes my heart. And I said, you know, the the great thing about that is not only are you filling your home with worship, are you like Mm -hmm. trying to point everyone's heart to Christ, 
but you're yeah. teaching your kids like they can see when mom's tense they can see when she's yeah. frustrated and she's trying so they're seeing you in the struggle and they're seeing they're learning how to deal with it as well right that, so that that's two part like i'm worshiping god and i'm teaching my kids this is what i do when it all starts to crumble and yeah. she said her response <laughs> was so beautiful because she said it's interesting because I guess that's what my mom did. I never really thought about oh, it before, but that's what wow. she did, right? Yeah. So uh -huh. I think as much as we can just live our life fully and honestly before our kids, mm -hmm. right? You know, because mm -hmm. sometimes I just want to give them perfect. I want to give them the perfect mom. Yeah. I want to give them this house that's curated <laughs> perfectly, the perfect Christmas, the perfect educational experience, you know, where it mm -hmm. does smell like chocolate chip cookies and there is classical music playing all the time. You know, that's not <laughs> yeah. reality. Right. I mean, even if I could pull that off, I'm giving them something that's not going to be possible for them to pull off either, right? It's a yes. realistic expectation. That is so, and that's not my goal yeah. with these kids. Mm -hmm. I want to introduce them to what's real. So I can I can process these things verbally with them. I can say, man, moms, I am frustrated today. It, it is hard for me to, I'm struggling, but this is what I do. Let's talk about it. And I can walk them through my actual mm -hmm. strategies. I don't know which ones they will adopt. I don't know right. which ones will like really sink in and become mm -hmm. their own habits because that's going to be between them and the Lord, but I'm going to offer up yeah. as many as I can to them and, yeah. and trust that they'll latch onto some, and that will be the way um, they become rememberers and fight those things in their own life as adults. Yeah, that's, that's really good because yeah, our kids are each different and some things are going to work for them and some things are not, not, and it's not because we figured it out that they're going to, you know, <laughs> no, right. just it's all going to be perfect and roses down, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, oftentimes I ask God, I'm like, why did you give me this wisdom after, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I should have had it before, you know, but right. you knew that they needed to kind of have a messed up life, I guess, yeah. <laughs> in order to make your plan work out for them. And I just had yeah. to come to that piece that, yes, mm -hmm. it just wasn't going to be perfect and it's not going to be perfect. And that's how, that's why we need God. And that's why my kids right. need God. And that's, if we were to do it all perfect, we wouldn't need him. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, and we'd also wait till we're eighty to have children, right? Because yes, we ever exactly. be smart enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as we're approaching the holidays, and you you mentioned that a little bit, I would mm -hmm. love for you to talk just about you know those harmonious rhythms mm -hmm. through holiday seasons. I think it's when we most become out of sync, and yet mm -hmm. this is the birth of our King, and mm -hmm. it should be the least amount of time or time of the year where we should be out of sync. But, mm -hmm. um, but what are some ways that um, we as families, especially with homeschooling, that we can maybe be more purposeful this season about mm -hmm. being um, intentional? Mm -hmm. I would start with, with setting it up correctly in my mind. Like, what do I really want my kids to remember this year? What is right. the one thing I want to take away? I had this sweet moment recently. I have a friend who, um, whose son, he's 29. So they're a little bit older and he just met someone who he wants to marry. And they, and she's also 29. And they're just on this fast track, right? Because they, they have wanted to be married, but haven't found the right person. So they kind of know what they want. And it's just different than maybe yeah. it would be for a 20 year old. Right. So right. Um, anyway, so, so they spent, the kids spent some, they're barely kids, I guess they're adults, yeah. <laughs> spent some time together getting to know each other. And she was saying for her, her son. Um, as he got to know her friends and her parents and just spent this intensive time, like talking with them, he noticed everyone said just how kind she was. And, you know, they've obviously been talking and having lots of phone conversations and getting to know each other really well. And he had noticed that, but to have that be the recurring theme from every right. person, she's just so kind that stuck yeah. with me. Like what, what would someone say about you in that situation? Right. You know, would they say she's just so what, what a great thing to have your friends and family and all these people you interact with say about someone, just the presiding theme that she's so kind. So mm -hmm. in the same way that had me thinking about, you know, what, what do I want the theme of my holidays to be? What do I want it to be yeah. in my home? Do I want it to be like, what is the one thing? If my kids only took one thing away from this, is it that, you know, the tree was beautiful. That's what, that's mm -hmm. what I want them to know, right? The presents were so good. Or do I want them to know Christ with their mom who gets some things right and gets some things wrong. And someday, you know, someday we did the advent calendar or the advent reading and other days we missed it because we were doing other things as a family. Like, can that, can that still be good? So maybe right. to a certain extent, it's just lowering my expectations. Hmm. And that doesn't mean you have to be a minimalist and we can't, we right. can't do the things and we can't try the things. And, you know, if you love decorating, I love decorating for Christmas in my home, let's do it, you know, mm -hmm. but it might, in some years it's more than others. 
Right. Some years, the devotions we do are more than others. There's times I've set out with these great plans and this is going to run to this Christmas school. It's going to be so great. And then I end up feeling defeated and ruined when it's like, we did half of them. We didn't even frost the cookies we made or, you know, whatever yeah. else. <laughs> you know? And that can be its own funny memory that, that, yeah, exactly. that, year that we didn't, we didn't frost the cookies and we ate them and Hey, we missed out on the frosting. They were better for us or something, you know, right. all of yeah. that can be good. I want this to, I want mm. all of these memories, Lord, to glorify you. I want them to like right. bond our family together, connect our family mm-hmm. and through celebrating your birth and not every celebration is going to go perfectly, but can it mm. still be good? So I think just asking right. your question in that, in that beginning with your husband, maybe with your whole family, if their kids are older, yeah. What mm-hmm. is it that we want this to be about? What is it that we want to remember? And how can we make exactly. some things, how can we set some things up to make that happen? Mm-hmm. And then just commit to being joyful and offering it all. Let's offer him our mess. Let's offer him our unfrosted cookies if that's what it comes to. Yes. And then you're teaching yeah. them a life skill at the very same time. Uh, yeah, exactly. The just the yeah, things aren't just going to go perfectly every year. You know, it's not this cookie cutter. <laughs> um, it didn't mean that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So we, 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 my kids, you know, came to this expectation that every Christmas we do this and then mm-hmm. things just changed, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. start out of my house and Christmas is just isn't the same. You don't get all the snacks. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I've just gotten busy. Um, yes. And so, you know, I, I often do ask my kids that now, what, what are your top three things when mm-hmm. we all get together that you mm-hmm. want to do that we, um, we do together because mm-hmm. it's, it, you just can't do it all. Mm-hmm. And, and you've got to focus on again, what's most important and, mm-hmm. um, and making certain that, that God is, you know, he is in the mix of your decision-making as well. And what, what is mm-hmm. most important to him? Mm-hmm. And, okay. and so, yeah, bringing that all together. Um, so as I'm going to have you talk about your book after this, but before we do that, I'd love for you to, um, to just, what, what would you like to challenge our listeners with? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've been asked this question before, and I think different things every time, but but so much of our conversation has become about just stepping back from the moment mm-hmm. and having this conversation, this background conversation continually with the Lord. It's like, what would you want me to see here? Yeah. What do you want me to remember here? I think that's such a great challenge. I still feel the mm-hmm. need for that in my own life. I'm not writing about this or talking about it because I've mastered it. I've talked about it because I need it, right? right? There's so many different angles as our kids grow and so many different relationships. I feel like the relationships mm-hmm. change over and over again. And now Absolutely. I'm learning to parent adult children and mm-hmm. never done that before. So I'm new again at this. I just thought mm-hmm. I just mastered teenagers or whatever, you know, <laughs> we're going through all of these things. And, and so my need for the Lord to teach me, to guide me and all those conversations. And I, and it's so easy to make it about the thing, make it about yeah. the conversation with dating, mm. make it about the marriage thing, make it about the Christmas thing, but not stepping back and have that conversation with the Lord saying like, what do you want me to learn here? How can mm. I honor you here in this relationship? Right with this holiday, as I teach this kid, how can I honor you? What does that look like? You know, I mean, talk about the drummer boy. I have no gift to bring. I have nothing Mm, without you. So I just want to honor you. I want to glorify you. I want to worship you with Mm -hmm. my work. Can you help me do that? Because sometimes I don't know. That's kind of an abstract idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but let me know, teach me how to do that one mm. step at a time. So I would just challenge them to step back when you feel those strong emotions, that strong exhaustion or that frustration with all the things, like how can I step back and say, what needs to go, Lord? You know, what's yeah. too much and mm-hmm. how can I honor you here? Yeah. To really lean in and listen instead of just reacting and doing and, yeah. and that, that is so, so hard, but a practice that I'm sure you can testify to becomes a little bit easier um, as you per- you're more purposeful about saying, mm-hmm. no, stop. <laughs> I need to stop. Mm-hmm. God right. needs to, to speak before I take another step. Um, right. Yeah. Cause we can get way ahead of him and then be yeah. in the wrong place. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you, you don't want to be in those places because it takes yeah. a lot of energy and effort to get out of them then. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so tell us a bit about, about your book. Um, but then she remembered. 
Yeah, yeah. So that book came out in April, and um, and anything I write is really I'm, I'm ultimately a student of the Word. So it just comes from my time spent studying God's Word. And so I noticed many years ago as I was reading through just the call to remembrance throughout Scripture and what happens when God's people forget. And it's not a new thing. You know, we see the nope. Israelites losing their way. We see all kinds of times in the scripture where people have lost their way, but God affords for that, right? He, there's grace for that. And he's reminding his people again and again. In Philippians Absolutely. 3, Paul starts out talking about, it is good for you, or it's no trouble for me, and it is safe for you, for me mm. to remind you of these things. Like, it's good. It's for our minds. It's safe for us to be reminded again and again of God's goodness. Yeah of who mm -hmm. he is and of how he loves. And those have just yeah. been such powerful tools in my own life as, I, as I've gone through some hard things. And I, those times mm -hmm. and those moments where I don't know what to do, I don't know how to respond and like the anxiety and the fear is real. And I don't think right. that's just, just my specific situations. It's when we yeah. hear things on the world stage, when we worry about the future of our kids, when we talk about AI or politics, all of those things. Yeah. Like I don't know all the answers to all these things. So, so that anxiety right. is real in those moments. Is. But what is also real is we can step back and say, but I do know who God is. Mm -hmm. and I do know how he loves. And I know how he's been faithful throughout my own life. So that's really just stopping to pull back and remember, but this I know of God, right? And it makes yes. all the difference. So I don't have to know what the impact of foreign relations is going to be next week. You know, I don't have right. to sit there and scroll everything about COVID because I just really want to know, you know, we have this hunger to know and we have access to information like ever before. But sometimes I think at a certain point, it just breeds more fear and anxiety. So how can I stop and think, God, who are you here? Who mm -hmm. have you always been? So can I say, and even so, even if any of that, this is right. who God's going to be. And this is where I'm going to plant my feet. So that's really the heart of the book. Yeah, that's just beautiful because God, yeah. God meets us in those places, and mm -hmm. and He remember and reminds us just like you said. The, that's the work of the Holy Spirit to remind us mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of our conversation. That was um, very mm -hmm. impactful when you said that um, because we are we're limited in capacity. We forget so easily, and like you said, the yeah. Bible is just a testament to that <laughs> and how how easily we are. Our human nature is yeah. about forgetting, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah. But but God is good to remind us when we if we put our attention on Him, and mm -hmm. instead of on all the other things that are distracting us. And I think that's really a good summary of um, just this whole conversation. And it's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just thank you for um, all that you have shared today. So um, your website, um, katiewestenberg.com. What can people find mm -hmm. there when they um, visit that site? Yeah, you can find information about my books and where they can be found and all of that. And and some blog articles, I'm not writing on there quite as much, but all the information on where you can contact me, it's on there. Okay, awesome. And I will also put a link to, um, I guess your your publicist also gave me a link to your book. So I'll share both of those links uh, in the, the show notes, both on YouTube as well as the podcast. So you don't have to try to type that in or figure out how it's spelled. Just click on those links and you'll, you'll get to that, that information. So, um, so yeah, well, thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate um, just your sharing from your heart and your experiences. And um, I'm just so glad that God has given you this message. It's very pertinent in this time. And for sharing thank you for having us. me, Peggy. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. I love being here. Yeah. So next week we are going to talk. Um, Stephanie Buckwalter is going to be back. She has been on our show many times, but she's going to talk about extended learning, how to homeschool after high school for a student who especially has more profound learning needs. Because a lot of times we wonder, what's that next step? And the traditional education system doesn't offer really um a lot of good steps for, for kids who have been homeschooled and are used to that home environment. So she's going to talk about some alternatives that you have to do from home after high school so you can keep your student learning and growing and um, have those opportunities open to them when they're ready. So excited about that conversation. Um, and just make sure you check out Katie's website at um, katiewestenberg.com and um, check out the resources that she has um, to share with you. So thanks again, Katie. Appreciate um, you and taking time out of your, your schedule. Um, and, um, and I just pray that God just continues to bless you and um, to uh, speak through you the truth and love and, um, and encouragement. Thank you, Becky.
Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll see you all here next week. Um, same time, same place. And until then, have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, if you're watching the show live, I guess if you're listening to the podcast, that's beyond you. Um, but we'll see you all again next week. God bless everybody. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on this podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. This has been Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. I'm Dr. Lauren DeVille, a practicing naturopathic physician in Tucson, Arizona. In my podcast, Christian Natural Health, my guests and I discuss topics ranging from nutrition, sleep, hormone balancing, and exercise to specific health concerns like hair loss, anxiety, and hypothyroidism. I'll also interweave biblical principles as they apply throughout the podcast because true health is body, mind, and spirit. Listen to Christian Natural Health for free at lifeaudio.com or on your favorite podcast platform.